Oklahoma Inside Out, a weekly broadcast of Cimarron Alliance that focuses on the issues, culture, and people important to LGBT Oklahomans. And now, here's your host for Oklahoma Inside Out, Scott J. Hamilton. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Oklahoma Inside Out. I'm delighted that you're joining us this week. We have a very interesting show for you, a wonderful guest who's going to be talking about a topic that we've never really touched on in the two years that we've been doing this broadcast. So I'm really happy that you're here with us today. I want to say a very special word of thanks to our guest from last week's program. Wayne Besson was with us, and man, he was a busy, busy guy. Um, Really did media interviews all over the world while he was here in Oklahoma City, and so for him to carve out some time to be with us here on Oklahoma Inside Out was just really gracious on his part. I love working with Wayne. Uh, what, what a great job he does every single day for our community. Again, we've got a great show for you. I'm glad that you're here with us, and I'm looking forward to introducing you to our guest, and we'll do that right after we take this very quick break. <laughs> This edition of Oklahoma Inside Out is made possible through the generosity of friends and supporters like you. To support this program and the advancement of equal rights for LGBT Oklahomans, please consider making a generous gift today at CimarronAlliance.org. Welcome once again to Oklahoma Inside Out. Our guest today is someone that has been popping up literally all over the place. He's just involved in so many aspects of the LGBT community here in Oklahoma City, doing some great work representing a a wide variety of folks and certainly one group in particular. It's my pleasure to welcome to Oklahoma Inside Out today, Nate Benner. Nate, welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. Now, you are Oklahoma Mr. Leather 2013. Yes, sir, I am. Tell me what that means. It's a leather title. I've been able to travel the country and help represent the leather community in Oklahoma. Um, I've been to Washington, D.C. I competed nationally for the title of International Mr. Leather in Chicago uh, recently. Um Okay, that's a, that, so it's a pageant type of a, of a program. I mean, it's, it's I like the, on circuits. I like the term competition. There you go. <laughs> okay, much much better than the no tiaras. Um, let's talk a little bit about the leather community because there's certainly a mystique that surrounds the leather community, even uh, for people in the LGBT community. There's often just I think not a lot known and perhaps some misconceptions. Would you just talk generally a little bit about? Um, what, what's what's involved in being in a part of the leather community? A lot of people hear about the leather community and they instantly, their mind goes to whips, chains, and sex. And well, don't get me wrong, that is a fun aspect of it. There's also other parts uh, such as brotherhood, um, coming together for common purposes, uh, helping different charity organizations, um, just having a very large family that has a sim- similar interest. You mentioned brotherhood. Uh, I've observed, uh, and again, just as a casual observer, that there are some similarities to um, older motorcycle gangs, and just in terms of um, the familiarity with each other, the, the the sense of of common purpose, if you will, even even similarity in dress in some ways. Well, definitely, it uh, that's actually where the leather culture originally came from. Was uh, people coming back from uh, World War II? and missing that brotherhood that they had from overseas and they would start uh, riding motorcycles together and that leather culture just kind of turned into what we have today. Okay. Is it is it limited exclusively to men in the community? No, there's actually a contest called IMSL, which is International Mrs. Leather. There's a, a common mistake is that the leather community is strictly a gay community. I have many, many straight uh, leather brother and sisters. Are there, are there organizations in Oklahoma City that are devoted specifically to uh, the, the gay culture? Um, yes, there's TLSA, which is in Tulsa. Tulsa a Leather Seeker Association, as well as uh, the National Leather Association of Oklahoma. We have several different organizations that 
put on several different leather events. We have Twisted in Tulsa, Oklahoma Mr. Leather. Um, actually, the event that I'm working on, Kink Weekend, Oklahoma City. Um, it's So there really is a lot happening. There is, and a lot of people don't realize that it's right here and able for, if you're curious, to come out and join us and find out exactly what we're about face-to-face. Let's, let's talk about that. I mean, okay, a lot of us, uh, when, when we came out, um, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know where to go. Um, we had a notion of where bars were, but it was scary. It was scary to, to take that first step. And I, I would think that for a lot of people uh, who may be even casually interested in leather, the, it would be the same thing. It's like, uh, I don't know, where do I go, what do I do? Maybe, I, you know, there's a certain um, trepidation of stepping into something new. So is it a pretty welcoming community? I find it very welcoming, and it's actually becoming more and more welcoming. Uh, just because you see a man fully clad in uh, leather jackets and boots, that can be kind of intimidating. But feel free to walk up and just say hi. Start a conversation. We're not scary people. <laughs> <laughs> I like to hear that. You, uh, when, when you were getting ready to come on our program today, you sent me a note. And you said, what do I need to wear? And uh, I told you just be casual. And you said, good, because leather in July often don't mix in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I can imagine that that's, uh, that that's very much the case. It goes beyond just dress, though, doesn't it? It does. It uh, does. I know several leather men who the only piece of leather they own is a pair of boots. Uh, being a leather man is really more about what's on the inside. After all, as I told you earlier, uh, sex is a very large part of the leather community. And let's face it, when that's happening, there's very little leather uh, being worn in most cases. Very, fair enough. <laughs> well, I want to, you mentioned a moment ago, um, the, the event that you're preparing for now. It's coming up here in a couple of weeks in Oklahoma City. And w- what's the name of the event? Kink Weekend OKC. Kink Weekend OKC, and that's July 19th? 19th, 20th, and 21st. Where is it? It's actually going to be centered around 39th Street, which is Oklahoma City's Gay District. We're also uh, going to be having one of the events at the Voodoo Lounge, which is in downtown near the Chesapeake Arena. If if you're familiar with the uh, Sanctuary Haunted House, it's actually a club that is in the basement. And when I saw the venue for the first time, I was like, this place was built for a kink event. <laughs> I want to learn all about this event, and I know our listeners will too, and we'll do that right if we, we take this quick break. Hi, I'm David Macy, a board member of the Cimarron Alliance, and I'm asking for your help. We work every single day to make life better for gay Oklahomans, now and for generations to come, but we can't do it without you. Please consider making a gift of just $20 a month to the Cimarron Alliance and be a part of our march toward equality. Visit www.cimarronalliance.org today and make your pledge. It's a gift you can feel good about giving. If you rely on the daily paper and local television news for information about your local, state, and federal government, then you are only getting half the story. The Oklahoma Observer goes beyond what other news sources provide. In fact, we offer news, analysis, and commentary that you can't find anywhere else. As quickly as things change at the state and federal levels, we all need to know how legislation affects our community and ourselves. But how can we make sense of what's happening at the state capitol and in Washington? The answer is the Oklahoma Observer. We make the information and the impact on you easy to understand. This way you can make truly informed decisions about your elected officials, community, and family. If you've never read The Oklahoma Observer, or haven't read it in a while, I hope you'll take a look. You might be surprised just how much help we can be to you. Visit us today at okobserver.net. Our only agenda is to provide critical news for critical thinkers. Welcome back to Oklahoma Inside Out. I'm Scott J. Hamilton, and we're visiting today with Nate Benner, who is Mr. Oklahoma Leather. And just before the break, we started talking about Kink Weekend, and it sounds like it's going to be a full weekend. What's what's involved in Kink Weekend? What's not involved is more the question. (laughs) Uh, One of the big events that we're going to be having, which is going to be the Friday and Saturday, we're having a Leather Mart, which is going to uh, feature several... Leather vendors from all over the country. We have Leather Masters from Dallas coming. Twin City Leathers is coming. We have the Kink Shop from Louisiana coming, as well as uh, several local 
uh, vendors such as Punish Pedal. These vendors are going to have everything from clothing, toys, floggers, whips. It's something that there's not a market for here in Oklahoma City. You have nowhere to go to buy this kind of stuff. So I'm bringing the best of the best to a central location for you to be able to shop. So there really is a market for it. There's just no place for people to go. Right. Okay. Um, it, this is not the first year you've done this event, is it? This is actually our third year. It's always been a one-night event at uh, Ingalls which is in Oklahoma City, and it just kept growing. And I had people coming from out of town, and they were like, Nate, this is such a wonderful event, but why am I going to come out of town for an event that is only one, one day? day yeah. So I started thinking, okay, what can I add to make it a two-day event? And then all of a sudden, it was a three-day event. And it took on a life of itself and started growing and growing and growing. Other organizations started wanting to be involved. And before I knew it, it had a life of its own, and I was just standing back watching it blossom. <laughs> and so besides the Leather Mart on Friday and Saturday, what, what else is happening? On fr uh, Friday night, we're going to be doing a, a fetish show, which is going to be at the Voodoo Lounge. It's going to be a fun, crazy night. There's going to be a VIP section for people in full leather wear. If you don't have any leather wear, relax. You can still get in for a small $5 donation. Upstairs in the VIP uh, is going to be a fun show that has everything from pole dancing, sword swallowing, suspension, and downstairs is going to be a little bit more of a vanilla but still a fun show for those who don't want to quite risk getting upstairs and seeing the more hardcore stuff. So it's just like one toe in the water. Exactly. Okay. Okay. The best part is all proceeds from that night are going to go to um, other options in Team Friendly OKC. And it's team friendly. I want to talk about as well, but uh, let's let's make sure we've got all of the details of everything for Kink Weekend first. Um, how how are, are there tickets available? How do people learn more? You can go to www.okc.okc.kinkweekendokc.com. Uh, sorry, <laughs> and uh, tickets are available for uh, seventy five dollars. That includes the pool parties that includes the fetish show the v, uh, it includes the party bus it includes the workshops that are available uh, the leather competition pretty much it includes everything for $75 exactly you will not have you you will have something to do all weekend long with that ticket and and give us the website again www.kinkweekendokc.com Okay, now let's um, let's let's shift gears just a little bit, and we'll come back to the weekend before the broadcast is over. But tell me about Mr. Friendly. Team Friendly OKC is a part of a national chapter of Team Friendly. It's all about ending the stigma surrounding HIV and AIDS, and also we help other organizations. Um, fulfill their mission of enriching the lives of people living with HIV and AIDS. It was actually, uh, you and I met uh, when you were talking about Team Friendly on World AIDS Day last December. Exactly. And I was really interested. I think it's a very interesting approach. Um, talk about removing a stigma and, and just the, the whole idea of, of a smiley face I think is really cool. Well, if you notice, the logo is actually a smiley face with a negative um, sign for the eye and a positive sign for the nose. And it really just helps us remember that positive or negative, we're all in this together, and we need to try to live a stigma-free lifestyle. That includes keeping an online stigma-free stigma online identity. So we are not going to use words in our online profiles such as clean and dirty to describe our status. The second you say, well, I'm clean, that implies that people living with HIV is dirty, and that's absolutely not true as well as DDF, which is some of the uh, listeners might know means drug and disease free. We don't want to lump everybody into the same category as drug users that are positive. Right, right. Because I know a lot of people are teachers, they're mothers, they're active members of their church community, they're active members of the straight community, the gay community, and they're not bad people. There's no point to lump them into that category. But I, I just want to point out that I think that... Mm -hmm. Why this is so important is because, sadly, we still have a stigma in our community and in the greater community uh, for people living with HIV and AIDS today. So I, I applaud your work. And that's a direct result of, of your title, isn't it? That's, I mean, that's part of your outreach uh, as Mr. Oklahoma Leather. I actually started Team Friendly OKC before um, I won the title, but it's definitely helped, the title has definitely helped me fulfill its mission. Terrific. We're going we're gonna to take a quick break and we'll be back with Nate Benner right after this. 
Hi, I'm Lorette Taylor, past chair of Cimarron Alliance. I joined the board because I believe in the vision and the work of this organization. We're working every day listening to the concerns of our community and helping to address those very concerns. I hope you will consider supporting Cimarron with a gift. Even $10 a month will help. Working together, we really can achieve equality for all gay Oklahomans. Please visit www.cimarronalliance.org and make your gift today. If you rely on the daily paper and local television news for information about your local, state, and federal government, then you are only getting half the story. The Oklahoma Observer goes beyond what other news sources provide. In fact, we offer news analysis and commentary that you can't find anywhere else. As quickly as things change at the state and federal levels, we all need to know how legislation affects our community and ourselves. But how can we make sense of what's happening at the state capitol and in Washington? The answer is the Oklahoma Observer. We make the information and the impact on you easy to understand. This way you can make truly informed decisions about your elected officials, community, and family. If you've never read the Oklahoma Observer or haven't read it in a while, I hope you'll take a look. You might be surprised just how much help we can be to you. Visit us today at okobserver.net. Our only agenda is to provide critical news for critical thinkers. Welcome once again to Oklahoma Inside Out. We're talking to Nate Benner today. And Nate, one of the things I asked just before uh, we, we took a break, this has been a very active part of your role uh, carrying the title of Mr. Oklahoma Leather, hasn't it? It has. It's a definitely a passion of mine. It's my platform that I used when I actually won the competition in my speech. Is it really? It is. Okay, then that, that helps to explain your passion for it. Um, where where do you go from here? Where do you personally go? Because you'll, you'll only hold this title until October. And what's next for Nate? I, def- I just want to keep growing as a leather man. I want to help uh, the community. I really would love to see a day that positive or negative, nobody cares. And I really hope to be part of helping, especially our local community, get to that point. We, we talk so much as a community about um, being disenfranchised, about being discriminated against or pushed aside. But the fact is that oftentimes we're guilty of doing that within our community. And a lot of times, don't you think it's just because uh, we don't know enough about each other? Exactly. And That's why I encourage people to walk up and talk to somebody when they see us out in leather. Find out that we're normal people. We're just like me and you. We just have different interests. You you mentioned before that that there are women involved in the leather community. How about people of color? There's actually a uh, a title called Mr. Leather of Color. I I hope I got that title right. But... uh, there is, I know several people of color, of um, Asian descent, of different nationalities who are into leather. And a pretty good age range as well? A very large age range. You would be surprised how many people are calling going, can we be uh, 18 and 19 and get into these events? Unfortunately, no, but it's really exciting to know that there is a leather uh, community that is young. We actually have a group in town called The Next Generation uh, that is the younger generation of leather. All right. So it, it, it is a bigger thing than I think a lot of people realize. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful that you're out there promoting uh, a greater sense of awareness because as we know more about each other, there's less to be afraid of and actually more to admire and respect. And uh, it's more fun to get to know. Let's let's go back a moment and, and talk very briefly uh, about Kink Weekend. I, I got to tell you, just the name of it alone, I think is pretty awesome. Um, but I know that that, that could also... You know, frighten some people. It's like, I don't know, I'd like to go, but, you know, what are they going to do? You mentioned before that that this is a friendly event for people who really have had no exposure to the leather community. Very, very true. In fact, most of the workshops are 101 classes that you can come in and just find out the basic, simple information about certain kinks and fetishes, how to do it safely. Um, We have classes on everything from um, puppy play, which is an aspect all of its own, um, which is not bestiality. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bestiality, let me put that. Um, but to master and slave relationships. Um, we have a big leather competition that is going to be Mr. Heartland Leather that's going to include four states, um, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, and um, 
Oklahoma, and the winner of that's going to go be able to go to compete at International Mr. Leather. Awesome. Now we I can't believe it. We are almost out of time. Give us the website one more time. www.kinkweekendokc.com. I, I always love visiting with you. Do you promise that you'll come back and be on the show again? I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's been a great pleasure having you. Thank you so much, and we're looking forward to Kink Weekend in Oklahoma City. All right. Thank you. Our guest today has been Nate Benner, Mr. Oklahoma Leather. As you can see, we are all about exploring every aspect of the LGBT community in Oklahoma City, and we're always eager to hear your ideas for guests or topics for this broadcast. Just send us an email at oklahomainsideout at cimarronalliance.org. I want to say thank you to our producer, Chris Moyer, our announcer, Lisa Pizzieri, associate producer, Guy Peters, Cimarron Alliance board co-chairs, Catherine Primus and Randall Marsh. I'm delighted that you've been with us and look forward to being with you again next week. Until then, for all of us at Oklahoma Inside Out and Cimarron Alliance, I'm Scott J. Hamilton thanking you for being with us. And until next time, hang on to the vision of a fair and just Oklahoma. Oklahoma Inside Out is a production of Cimarron Alliance, Central Oklahoma's preeminent LGBT advocacy and education organization. If you have a topic you would like to hear discussed or a person who you would like to hear interviewed, please call 405-495-9300 or email oklahomainsideout at cimarronalliance.org. Please feel free to share the link to this broadcast with your friends. 